guys. Mark or Colbert's Speedo Co. Refinish Network. So it is that time. You guys can see. Looks a hell of a lot different up here already. We are finally, after years and years and years and years of uh, moving things around and figuring out where to plot things, we're going to start. I've had this plan for years, actually, when I first bought this building when I was like 28 years old, to make this front into a showroom. Fortunately, the back needed some very extensive renovation, and I was forced to uh, you know, do my projects up here for years. Uh, not anymore. We got the mechanical shop, uh, 4,000 square feet behind the body shop. And then we got like another four or 5,000 square feet of space in the back. Brand new commercial door. Um, we got a bunch of space in here. This is about a 20 or, uh, excuse me, 40 by 20 foot space in here for storage. Got a bunch of my crap in here. Finally ready to start juicing up this front section here. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is... I'm going to be showing you guys epoxy flooring. Fortunately, you know, when you're working with these older floors and you don't have access to a $10,000 floor grinder, you're really kind of limited with the adhesion you're going to get. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to increase our odds. we got our pressure washer. This is the, the, the starting step. For these of you guys that do this stuff at home, you don't have a $10,000 concrete grinder. You don't have access to all the fancy tools that the guys that you know, do $5 million worth of flooring a year, do, you know, this is going to be your best friend is a pressure washer, some good chemicals, um, a little bit of muriatic acid. Only suggest, uh, not that muriatic acid, it neutralizes once it hits the concrete. And once that kind of effect like fizzle, fizzles off, it's not bad for the environment, but it is, can be very bad for you. <laughs> I recommend maybe a little bit lesser of a harsh cleaner. Um, we just got some general soap in the uh, foam can. We're going to knock out two birds in one stone. We're going to start foam canning the whole front. While we're at it, the Civic needs a wash, an old Dumbo car. So we're going to do everything in one shot. Blast all this dirt and grit out of here and uh, see what it looks, looks like tomorrow. And if we have to, we'll repeat the process.
as you guys can see, cleanup and sanding of the floor went really well. Um, those of you guys probably going to ask, what grit did we use for sandpaper for the floor? That was 60 grit. That was the lowest grit that I could find. For those of you guys that don't know, lower the grit, the rougher it is. After we got done sanding, we just simply pressure washed it, everything for a last time. And then we let the floor sit for, I believe it was about six or seven days just to really dry out. One thing you don't want is any moisture in the concrete when you're applying a epoxy product. Now, we did use a little bit of extra assurance. We used the Moisture Barrier Primer. This is just a one-part concrete primer. All it does is it just helps to lock out any moisture coming from the concrete and basically create a barrier between your concrete and your epoxy. Um, does this help out a lot? It's a $30 primer. Eh. I've used it before. I've had okay luck with it. It does not prevent tire peel up, like the, the hot tire pickup, 100%. It will not do that 100% guarantee from my experience. But it, it does, it just, it, it does help a little bit. So now when it comes to application, you really want to make sure that you roll, roll, roll. You're going to squeegee it out as evenly as possible. This is kind of critical to not getting um, big balls and big piles of epoxy in one certain spot of the floor, creating an uneven look, which if you're not super experienced with this, I've only done about three floors, you're going to get, you're going to get imperfections in your floor, okay? The guys that do, you know, the $100,000 floors in Miami and they're doing this, you know, every day, seven days a week, you know, those guys can get a floor to look like a sheet of glass, much like I can get a, a panel on a car to look like a sheet of glass. They can do the same thing with a, with a concrete floor. I am not that guy. However, um, I do a pretty good job. All we're doing is we're just rolling, rolling, rolling. And what that's going to do is it's going to assure that you press that product into the rough texture of the concrete and create a strong mechanical bond. Mechanical bond is everything when it comes to any type of coating. If you don't have a mechanical bond, it will eventually fail. So now I wanna take you guys up front here and show you the difference between a kind of a shallow pour and more of a deep pour. So take a look at that left side and take a look at the right side. Big difference, right? Now, the left side of the garage floor, we use much less material. And you can see the little texture in the concrete and imperfections. And the right side, a lot less. So the thicker you go, the better it's going to look. have it showroom 95% complete we still got to put in these uh, slip over these ceiling tiles cover up all the plumbing we did years ago touch up a couple of those ceiling tiles um, like little minor miscellaneous stuff I got to do a little touch up you know a couple spots where we got some epoxy on the wall probably do a nice little caulk line along here just to kind of fill in this this little crack right here just put a nice bead of caulk on it just clean it up make it look nice also seal it um but here you go here's the final result i do not have a lot of money up here okay the total paint for up here i think i was around paint has gotten really expensive i think i was around probably 400 bucks maybe 300 bucks timer for the concrete floor i was right around 150 bucks. I think I got, no, actually wasn't that like 90, 90. 
I think I got like three or four gallons of that primer is 30 bucks a gallon. As far as the epoxy goes, if you guys like the build on this and the finish um, and the color, I am going to have kits on my website that you can buy. And you can do this right at home in your own personal garage. Put this stuff on pretty thick. I mean, we, we poured 34 gallons, 34 gallons of epoxy up here. It's 100% solids epoxy. This isn't the gimmick stuff you buy at the, the, the big box stores. This is real deal, professional, solvent-based epoxy. Now, where I went wrong was, obviously, we were trying to do everything in one pour. Um, so, I wouldn't advise doing that. I would advise doing multiple coats of epoxy. When you do multiple coats of epoxy, you actually end up filling in a lot more of those imperfections in the concrete. But here's what we got. Okay. So this is the pigment puddling up in certain spots. And you can see, especially where there's highs and lows on the floor, where the pigment kind of like settled and got a little blotchy. If you go like really close, you can see there's actually a little bit of solvent pop in our epoxy. Yep. You see right there. A little bit of solvent pop in the epoxy because of how thick we put this on. Once again, my mistake, I, I was just trying to pour it as thick as possible to cover up as many of the imperfections as I could in the concrete as possible. Only thing you do to resolve that is you would just come back in the next day with like some spike shoes and just put a second light coat of color, epoxy, your color epoxy, on top of that. And then you can come in the third day and you can do a just strictly clear. All you're doing is clear, clear top coat. We did not do any of that. I could have used a self leveler, a concrete self leveler to really like slick this floor out and get it flat and smooth. Come in, get a $22,000 floor grinder, grind it flat. But from the experience, the traumatizing experience I had in the back of the body shop with those concrete floor levelers, they are hit or miss. And let me tell you something, if it's a miss, you are screwed. Like you are totally screwed. <laughs> like there is no just pulling that stuff up. You got to grind it all back down. You don't waste it a thousand, two thousand dollars in material. Good luck getting the manufacturer to do anything because they ain't going to do nothing because they're, they are, they're never wrong. Had some serious issues with the, the leveler in the back. So I said, you know what? I said this floor at front, it wasn't like terrible. It just had lots of like little, you know, like little stuff. So we just poured the epoxy extra thick to try and like fill in all this. And it did, you know, it did good. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but you know, nice reflection, nice gloss, nice shine. Oh, it's smooth, you know, better than what it was before. Y'all know the golden rule. Every single project I do, whether it's a boxy floor, whether it's a Honda Genesis, whether it's a Honda Accord, whether it's an Acura RSX, it's better than what it was before. Boom. Done. Go have dinner. Enjoy life. Boom. Don't don't obsess over it. That's gonna wrap for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the transformation of the front of this buy shop. You guys have been watching me for years. You've seen this front. It was like a total dungeon before. Just trash everywhere. Parts everywhere. Just crap. Just it just looked terrible. And boom. Look at it. Look at us now. Look at us now. 2024. We're shining, baby. 2024, we're still shining, still still making some improvements. So I know this isn't a paint-related video, it's not a Speedico sponsored video. However, if you guys are looking for the best, uh, most user-friendly auto body and detail products in the world, which is what I put on these cars back here, go to www.speedico.com. They have everything you guys need to get your projects done. Go on the site, click my name, Marco's a sales rep. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. Catch you guys on the next one.